Welcome, welcome to uh, my channel. This is Clem's Lab where I show you uh, my build, uh, starting with our house and the lab itself. So it actually starts two years ago. We were uh, thinking of buying an apartment, but we were unhappy with uh, what we could get. So um, because of the fact that my fiance is American and I'm French, we didn't really see ourselves commit to a particular city uh, for buying an apartment. And this led us to actually consider a project that you would think would be a more of a secondary home, uh, a base camp or a place we actually would be happy to go back to, uh, even if our daily lives brings us uh, somewhere else in the world. So the way it went was that we uh, saw a few lands online, we visited them and then they were all pretty bad, either expensive or uh, too difficult to build. And then suddenly we just saw one that was perfect and then we were kind of hooked. And to that point, the, the project was kind of a crazy idea. We, nothing we were really considering for serious, but that land changed everything and we pulled the trigger right after. Okay, so from when we visited the land about two years ago, there was a lot of things to do even before, before we could start the build. So first in France, and it's the case in many countries, when you buy, you actually make a promise of buying. And this, this, this promise will turn in the deal if a few conditions are met. So for us, these conditions were that the, the seller would have to build a road to the land, uh, bring the wa water, electricity and sewage connections all the way to the, to the side of the land, that we managed to get a construction permit. And finally, that we would be able to get the loan um, to finance the, the build. So if these conditions are not possible, then one of the parties can just cancel the promise. Um, but to make all of this thing happen, for us, it took about a year. Construction permits depend a lot on the local laws and regulations. And in some cases, and for us, you need to build something that respects the local building code. So in the Alps, you have to build something that looks like a chalet. You can't just build a, a crazy tower. They ask you to respect a lot of the a lot of restrictions. So height restrictions, a maximum percentage of land that is used by the house, uh, window sizes, and even like the tones of wood or, or stones that you can use. To get our construction permit, I started by designing the, the first rough idea of what the house would look like on a Fusion 360. This is what I've used in the past for other projects, but it's by no means a good uh, architectural design software, but it did the job. But in France, we also had to get the stamp of an actual architect for our house. Uh, as soon as it's bigger than a, a certain surface area, you need to do that. So. Uh, getting the permit was actually quite a painful process and we got it uh, refused first for uh, silly reasons on, on the first try, but eventually we, we got it. The, between this and the time it took for the work on the road and to be able to get the land, the land was actually of officially ours only on August 2nd, 2019, so about a year after we, we, we visited it for the first time. Once we got Actually, the land we, we celebrated and we did have a few things prepared, but the, the uncertainty of the dates meant that we actually didn't have a good planning set for us. So the first thing we had to do was the excavation work. And we did prepare to do a lot of self-built initially, but not for that part. Um, so, so we started calling a few contractors, but August in France is not really the best time to get someone to work for you. So most of them told us that they would only be free in the fall or the next year. Uh, lucky for us, my fiance's dad knew how to use uh, an excavator. So we rented one and he showed me the ropes. Um, it's actually not that hard to use. The, the biggest difficulty is, I would say, hard to really measure well what you're doing. And then knowing that if you have slope or water, that makes it much, much, much more difficult. Um, so the, the only help we got was to actually just take out some of the dirt that we want to use later. So when you do that, you, you do want to keep a, a significant amount of the surface dirt because you'll use it later for the garden and, uh, uh, and other things. But the one that's really deep, you don't want to keep. So uh, that's what we did. 
Welcome, so this is day uh, three of the build. So we've been uh, excavating now for a few days. We, we rented a, an excavator at the local shop close by and we had to take out a lot, a lot of the dirt. Um, we bought this thing also, so it's a, this is an optical level. It gets you a, a precise idea of where you're looking and so you can take marks and be sure to know which altitude you're at and, so, and you set it to be flat because there is a there is a little I don't know if you can see it there but there is a little uh, bubble there that tells you uh, how to set it and so yeah so we can see kind of the four post of a house uh, of course we're gonna place them more precisely before we finish up. So we're almost at pad level now and now the next step is to dig out a little trench uh, to put the foundations in. Alright, so this is the second week of the build. We've made a lot of progress with the foundations. So now I'll show you guys, you can see the what we have. So. We've dug all of our uh, foundations, we put rebar in it and they're high in the floor before we pour concrete. So we'll pour a little bit of concrete and then we'll drop them and we'll pour more concrete. Uh, we've got a few troubles this week. Big one was the we got a lot of water and then the whole uh, mountain kind of fell on the on that side, uh, which took us a lot of time to, and hand digging, which was a Really painful. Hopefully, this one doesn't uh, fall on us also. And uh, yeah, so we have like all of our rebar posts. Uh, I'll show you. We we got a, a nice tool to make the rebar tying super fast, super easy. Uh, but uh, yeah, tomorrow is the big day. We get the concrete poured, so we'll see what happens. We are just down uh, pouring the, the foundations. As you can see, we've also set uh, more rebar, one, single ones, when the, the concrete was setting. Uh, pretty good results for a first time, I would say. Uh, we, used the, we used the rake a lot to, to make it uh, flat. Uh, even in the bottom cor in, the, in the top right corner there where there was a lot of water seems to be doing fine um, but uh, yeah a stressful time but things went well <laughs> <laughs> 